Hey folks, welcome to Fireflies Follies. I hope that you enjoy the video today. If you do, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that you will and that you'll stick around for a while. So today I am starting a batch of peach wine. I've had a few people ask me how I make wine, so I thought I'd bring you along and show you how I get started and kind of what the steps are to it. So in my bowl, what I have, I've measured out my dry ingredients and I have one tablespoon of yeast energizer, I have one teaspoon of pectic enzyme, I have two and a half tablespoons of acid blend, I have one teaspoon of wine tannin, and I have crushed up five Camden tablets. Now there are links to all of this stuff in the description box below. None of it is terribly expensive when you buy it in small quantities and this will be the third batch of wine that I have made with these ingredients with these same packages. So what I like to do is I like to measure my dry ingredients into a small bowl so that I can kind of mix them together. The tannin tends to clump up so I like to start with it all in one small bowl and I can make sure that I have everything crushed up. And the other thing that you're going to need in addition to your fruit you'll need filtered or purified water and wine yeast. Now this one is Premier Blanc by Red Star and that's what I'm going to use in my peach wine. I used um, the Premier Classique when I started strawberry wine a few days ago and um, these are the two that I prefer for wine making. There are several different ones that you can get. These are the two that I have experience with. And I've, I sanitized everything before I started and I labeled my bucket. Now, my aunt taught me how to make wine. I went to visit last year and she made some of the best wine I had ever tasted. In fact, she sent me home with a couple of bottles and I haven't bought a bottle of wine since. And she puts a tag on the top of her fermenter so that she knows when to change things over. And She has several of these buckets. I only have two. And because I'm going to be running two batches of wine kind of concurrently, they're a few days apart, um, I, I need these separate so I'm not going to be keeping it in this one. And what I like to do is I use just a liquid chalk marker because it washes off. It's the same thing that I use to label my canning jars. And I've written that this is peach. I'm starting it on 9-7. I will feed it on 9-8. And I will transfer it on 9-15. So the other thing that you're going to need is sugar. I'm making five gallons of peach wine. That requires 13 pounds of peaches and 10 pounds of sugar in addition to these ingredients and your packet of yeast. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take all of this stuff into the pantry, which is where I leave my wine because once this is full, I have a hard time moving it around. So I'm going to go assemble it all back in the pantry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get everything set up in the pantry and I will set the camera up back there and I will show you guys how this goes together. It's really quick and easy. Okay, I brought it back to my pantry and this is where it's going to this is where all the fermenting is going to take place back here in the pantry. And I've poured some of my water in it because the first thing that I need to do is I need to add all of my wine making ingredients into it and I just sprinkle it over the top let everything kind of mix in I'm gonna get in there and stir it in a minute but first I need to add 10 pounds of sugar So in goes 10 pounds of sugar. And then I'm going to take I'm just going to get in there and start stirring. 
I want it pretty well mixed together. The sugar's not going to completely dissolve, but it's going to come close. Now I'm going to grab my peaches and I have them in, it's called a fermenting bag, it's like a jelly bag, it's just a mesh bag, it's a very fine mesh. So I'm going to drop them in and then I'm just going to fill this up with water. five gallons of water in. So all that is left to do now is to cover it. And what I like to do just, it needs to be able to breathe. So what I like to do is just lay a cookie sheet over it. And then I cover it with a clean towel. And this is done until tomorrow. So tomorrow, I'll bring you back and we'll take a look at what's next. Alright, so yesterday we mixed up all the ingredients, added the fruit and the water to the peach wine. And today I'm going to feed it. It's been about 25 hours. And I am using the Red Star Premier Blanc yeast for this one. I don't really have a reason other than this is what everyone seems to think that you... they seems to think tastes best with the peach. So all I'm going to do is uncover it and I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. I'm going to cover it back up and I'm going to walk away for a week and in a week I'll come back, I'll bring you guys back, and we'll transfer it to the secondary fermenter and take a couple of steps with it there. I'll bring you back and show you how that goes. Okay, so it has been seven days since I added the yeast and it has been starting to ferment. Most of the fermentation for homemade wine happens in the first seven to ten days. So that's the reason that you want to leave it plenty of airflow just covering it with the towel. Now the peaches themselves have done their job. So what we're going what I'm gonna do is I am going to squeeze all of the liquid that I can out of them and then into the compost they go. And this is a very fine mesh bag. So you can really do some squeezing without getting pulp out. And I'm going to clean my hands and change the camera angle and I will be back to show you how I transfer. Alright, so what I have are a couple of carboys and I have labeled them. And basically what I put is the type of wine and when the next transfer is. And the way that I have mine set up, my bucket has a spigot and I have my carboy sitting directly underneath it. I'm going to transfer the liquid. I'm going to split it between these two because I have about five and a half gallons of wine and these are three gallon containers. So I'm going to split it between the two and then I will put stoppers and airlocks on so that it can continue to ferment for the next 30 days. But when I get down lower to the bottom, 
you'll I'll show you there's a lot of sediment that has already settled into the bottom of this. So I'm going to get these started transferring and it will take a little while, but I'm going to transfer out everything that's in the bucket into these two carboys. And I always start slowly to make sure that I've got my aim right because I don't want it to go all over the floor. And you can see that I am somewhat creative in how this works. I have my exercise stepper with my carboy sitting on it and my end table with my wine bucket sitting on it. Alright, so as you can see, there is sediment already started to form in the bottom of the container and you want to leave that in the bottom of the container and every time you transfer your wine, you want to leave that sediment behind. So I'm going to clean up just a little bit here and I will come back and show you how I set them up for the next stage. Alright, so hopefully you can see pretty well. Uh, the lighting in here is not the greatest. But what I have is a stopper. It's a drilled stopper. It's just a silicone rubber stopper. Um, and I've left a link to all the supplies in the description box below. So I'm going to insert the stopper in. And then I'm going to take an airlock. And I have filled it about halfway with water. And I'm going to insert the airlock in. Some people call these the bubblers. And over the next 30 days, as this continues to ferment, it allows the air to the gases to release, and that's why it's, people call it a bubbler because you'll see bubbles forming in it and coming up. It'll allow the air, all of the gases inside, to release, but it also protects the wine and keeps anything from getting in. Now, the airlocks that I use, there are a couple of different kinds. The ones that I use are the cylinder kind, 
and it's three pieces. It has a lid that snaps off. It has a center that just covers the chamber and then just the outer chamber. And all you do is just fill it about halfway with water and snap the lid back on and put it into your stopper. So now these are just going to go in my pantry and they're going to sit there for about 30 days. And in 30 days, this will clear considerably. Right now it's really cloudy. And I'll set it up and, and take a picture of it so you can see how cloudy it is right now. Um, and in about 30 days, it will clear considerably. A lot of the sediment will settle to the bottom. And when I transfer, I will leave all of that sediment behind as well. So I will transfer these because, the, because this is a white wine. I will probably transfer it for a second time in 30 days and let it ferment for 30 more days but I'll make that determination when I see just how clear it is 30 days from now.